Hi there, Andrew Jackson, OJ Design Studio. Say another video in this uh, transitions um, sort of series that I was hoping to put together. Um, so this time around, it's uh, like a single pipe into a double pipe or a single circle into a double circle. Um, and this is probably my most successful um, iteration of the model. Um, so as you can see up here, version 8, I've got a series of other models. I'm, I'll just flip through them and show you some failures. Uh, and then sort of how I got to this one, which is more successful. Okay, so this um, this one here, as you can see what I'm trying to achieve is um, going from a larger diameter down to a smaller diameter. Um, with the centre dropping into this blend here um, and the problem being was how to break up this um, n-sided patch area here so uh, even with the fill surface it doesn't work well it's all wobbly and stuff so yeah probably not the best approach so what I've done there is I just swept this swept a lot And then 3D sketch, which is a face curve, so you can change where that trims. Here's the 3D sketch as a trim. Uh, knit that together with this part down the end. I'm seriously going to skip through this fast. Mirror it over, knit it together. Sketch the uh, blend here between the two lower pipes. Uh, boundary blend with another 3D sketch at the top. Uh, knit those together. And then start patching in the middle here. Had a centre line curve here, which this surface and this surface conform to. Um, yep, so that wasn't going to work. So version 2 was a continuation of version 1, um, but trying it out, uh, just changing some of the dimensions around. Again, I thought, oh yeah, it's not that great. Version 3, as you can see, it's the same thing, except now I've kept this pipe the same diameter as that. Um, where I ran into a new issue, which is what, from the side elevation, I wanted to the model to appear as if it was uh, not dipping down. I wanted it basically horizontal along the top there. So the problem with this approach here was when I'm trimming this um, loft back um, down the side here, I should be actually trimming it back along um, the top point or zero degrees from the right hand plane okay so this is something a bit a bit different I decided to stretch the geometry out a bit more and as you can see here if I roll back to my loft oops roll back to the loft I have split the loft using a great tool called the split line silhouette curve. So if you ever go insert curve split line silhouette, basically that allows you to pick a surface, a direction, sorry, a vector. So right plane, pick a surface, and then you can pick um, an angle. So in this case, I've made it zero degrees. So that's the very, very top, the apex of that curve as it starts running down, going transitions from uh, curving upwards to curving downwards but this is great when you're trying to draft things you can put it uh, you know you can specify an angle there and it will split it at, that's where that surface is at three degrees from the right hand plane very useful tool okay so I've split this loft along the apex so when you're looking from the side elevation after I delete that face it runs along horizontally. Mirrored this over and then pretty much continued with the same sort of um, methodology as the earlier models. A curve down the middle and I've trimmed out a section here because that wasn't going to work. Um, trying to blend in here, going to end up with some nasty. Um, <laughs> G1 connections here and here, which you read quite strongly. Okay, so I trimmed out that area. 
and insert a surface, full sided surface, and then created a surface here. And this one, just to see what it was going to do, I just threw a surface fill in. Um, Which mean it sort of works, but it's a bit uncontrollable and through here. And I tried pushing, putting in some constraint curves, so in your surface fill, constraint curves, so some cross curves here. But then it went haywire and really lumpy. So I thought, hey, this isn't working for me either. But then I sort of remembered one of the old rules about blends is make sense to intersect things first, like where they, where the product, like this side here and the other side intersect with each other so version 5 oh, that is just a continuation of the other one sorry I'm getting ahead of myself so again you know it's a bit weird in here and a bit wobbly and a bit uncontrollable using the full surface so here we go so this is what I mean by intersecting the um there's my loft, and I've trimmed it with the right hand plane, which is basically the same line of trim as if you mirrored the loft over and then split it with itself, or trimmed it with itself. Um, so at least now I know where that point is. And then I've gone and trimmed back an area using a sketch, which is a spline. Mirrored that over because I'm not going to work up to the center line. It's, it's easier in this case just to work across the full model. And boundary surface, that's a single boundary boundary surface in there. Oh, whoops, that's old stuff. Okay, so this one here, let's have a look. So instantly it's 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 much better. You don't have that sort of ponding thing going on with the fill surface here. Um, but it's probably a little bit abrupt, um, like the width of the blend. You can sort of see where it where it changes quite quickly in curvature there. Which brings me on to version seven. So I've started looking at relaxing that area a bit more and, and making the trim wider and also changing how the trim um, tracks. So I'll show you that. So now there's my, my trim sketch now. It's uh, wider, so there's more room for the surface in the middle to flow and change direction. And also, I've, instead of going straight up here, I've, I've allowed... Uh, ease the, the trim out wider because I've added an angle here it was 90 degrees and so now 105 degrees you trim that that allows the surface to run a bit wider again giving a bit more space to flow mirror it over sketch at the bottom and now I've started actually adding a few cross curves as well as you can see here so there's intersection curve on each side and then a degree five spline busiest curve in the middle and boundary surface. So now have a look at this. It's not as abrupt here where the curvature's, you know, in the in the version six it's 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 quite sharp the, the change in here. This model I started having issues down around here instead, so that leads me on to version 8. So you can see that it's like a lump in here. So version 8 is where I parked this project. I thought this is enough. Um, okay, so what did I do differently here? I added some more cross curves. A centre line curve as well. This boundary surface. Has four curves in the first direction and three in the second. So I added a centre line curve. And some of these cross curves are coincident with the centre line curve. Uh, and vice versa. 
so all the curves uh, intersect each other. It, I've got around this problem down here, just with um, tweaking the trim, this trim surface here. Um, and then, what does it look like with zebras? And we'll turn the edges off. Yeah. So it's fairly smooth in there. It doesn't have that big problem in here. It's still, it's not 100% perfect, but it seems to be the most successful out of the techniques I was trying out. And, you know, I can um, solidify it and shell it out. So that all works okay. Um, and I can try my home baked ISO curve shader. Yeah, so if anything, it looks like there's a bit of widening happening here. So you can just accept that and see how this curve comes down. It sort of widens there and then goes straight again. So that's probably an area of um, that could be improved. Yeah, but it seems to be a fairly good technique doing it this way. Um, intersecting the um, surfaces first and then working on the blend. Okay, so there you go, that's uh, single pipe to double pipe transition or blend. Um, I'll stick this version 8 file on my um, my Google Drive, so if you, if you want to download the file and have a look at it, um, you're more than welcome to, the link will be in the description. If you find this useful, please subscribe to AJ Design Studio or my channel, Andrew Jackson. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Thanks very much, see ya.